Wix Studio, one end-to-end -end web creation platform for your agency to deliver exceptional work with absolute efficiency. The number one long-form writer that helps SEOs outrank competition at the click of a button using real-time research and NLP. Start ranking content today with contentatscale.ai. Hi, yes, my name is Daniel. I'm delivery director at Ecom SEO agency Novos. Uh, but my passion for crawling and indexing, and I'm going to call it a passion, started at my first job in SEO at Screaming Frog. Now, if you haven't used the Screaming Frog SEO spider, highly recommend you do. What have you been doing? Get on it now. They're here today, so check them out. Um, this quickly led to my nickname, Dan the Cruel King Cartland. Um, no one's actually called me this yet, but I'm hoping this talk is going to be the catalyst for things. Uh, so if you see me later, please, please do call me the Cruel King. But today, I'm going to take you on a crawling and indexing journey. I'm going to run through uh, five of the most interesting case studies I've encountered through my career, uh, how we fix them, the results from them, and what we can learn uh, for you to take into your own clients, your own websites. So without further... Oh, this includes... How to lean up your site to make real SEO gains. The mystery of the unfindable global navigation. Ah, there it is. And finally, ending on the final frontier, the world's most unindexable website. Now, I have got in touch with the Guinness World Records. Um, they quickly told me to piss off, but I'm pretty sure this is a Guinness World Record for the most unindexable website. So without further ado, why keep your site lean in the first place? Well, if you ask a lot of people this question, they might talk to you about crawl budget. But we know that Google can crawl hundreds of thousands of URLs at any one time. So I think this is really the wrong way of looking at things. The way I think of it is um, keeping your site lean is, if the slide changes, making sure signals are consolidated towards your important pages. This means. Googlebot crawling your important pages more frequently. For e-com sites, this tends to be your key category pages. You want your external authority focused uh, on the pages we want to rank as well. Make sure they're not spread across lots of thin pages, lots of duplicate parameter pages. We want them really focused on those category pages we want to rank. And obviously, we can't forget about the customer. We want the customer to find the right pages on site uh, and in the search results as well. So I'm going to bring you my first case study. And this is quite an extreme example of how we kept a site really, really lean and why we did so. This client had, uh, was a jewelry client, and they had loads of product pages. Uh, but for every product page, um, there were five different metal types and 12 different diamond shapes that a product could be. And every time you selected one of these, it created a parameter on the end of the product URL. So there were at least 17 URLs for every product. In fact, you could select several metal types and several diamond shapes at once. So what this meant is there are actually thousands and thousands of product parameter pages being created. All in all, this was far too many URLs. So what do we do about it? Well, first, we wanted to dig into the data. First, we looked at you know, what exactly were these product pages contributing in terms of sessions and revenue. And actually, you can see, really, there are only about 8% of sessions and revenue were coming from these product pages. But when we looked at the log files, what we saw is product pages made up over 50% of all crawl requests. So there's a massive disconnect here in terms of you know, the output of them and how much but, uh, like, uh, requests they're taking up from Googlebot. So how do we approach this? Well, we couldn't block them in robots.txt because they're in use in Google Shopping. And if we had done, it would have rejected the feed. So we were kind of stuck. What we did was quite bold. We no-followed all internal links to product pages across the entire site. You might be thinking at this stage, you know, that is absolutely crazy. Why would you do that? But the proof is in the pudding, and it paid off. You can see immediate and consistent results because Google is now seeing the context behind the site, crawling those key category pages much more frequently, and they began to rank much, much better for massive, massive terms. Uh, and you can see it's gone from strength to strength. So what can we learn from this? Well, you always want to ensure your key pages are prioritized for crawling. In doing this, you want to stop Google from crawling irrelevant pages. Now, for e-com sites, this is very frequently things like filter pages, or sometimes you have multiple different product URLs for one product. Really easy ways to lean up your site. 
But context is also key. Please don't go away from here and say, right, we're going to block all our product pages. It's quite an extreme example. The only reason we did it is because the data was there to support our decision. We knew there were too many requests going out, and these product pages really weren't contributing uh, enough. We were also ready to roll back if we needed to, because it was a test. Moving on to something completely different. So we're working with a client who just launched a new site, and with a new site came fresh hreflang. Now, hreflang has its issues, but this was clean. I'm talking correct ISO codes, every website referencing one another, every website returning a 200 response. This was looking great. I was excited. But we then crawled the site, and what we saw is actually all the hreflang was being reported as outside the head. I was not happy. Why does this matter? Well, Googlebot only recognizes certain elements within the head, which are listed here. When it comes across an element which isn't listed here, uh, it essentially says the head is now closed. It breaks the head, and anything after that will not be considered as part of the head. This is what was happening for us. This rogue div uh, was breaking the head and making Googlebot not recognize our hreflang. It was quite an easy fix. We worked with the development team, and the only change they made was to remove this, this one div. After that, we recalled the site, and look at that. No errors, contains hf, hreflang, exactly what we wanted to see. Perfect. So what can we take away from this? Well, make sure you only have valid elements in the head. That's the ideal situation. Now, we know this isn't always possible. So if you, if you do have invalid elements in your head, Make sure your important data comes before them. Uh, in our example, uh, we, had, uh, we were using an app which injected the hreflang, so it injected it quite far down in the head, which allowed this rogue div uh, to, to come before it and, and break the head. So if you, do have, uh, if, if you can't help it, make sure your important elements come before things like page titles, meta descriptions, hreflang is key. Moving on to the case study, the product release that drove millions. Now, if you ever play Brighton SEO Bingo, tick it off. Someone's claimed that they drove millions of pounds for a website with very little evidence. I promise you, this is completely true. The issue we knew at first, um, we crawled the site, and this was a massive e-com site, but an initial crawl of the site revealed just 24 pages. We then recrawled the site with JavaScript rendering, and this is more like what we wanted to see. Loads more pages, loads of categories, loads of products. Through some analysis, we realized that all category pages and product pages were being client-side rendered. This site itself was on React, and this is quite a common, um, common issue on sites that use JavaScript frameworks uh, or are headless. Uh, they often are client-side rendered. So why does this matter? Well, essentially, Googlebot crawls in two distinct stages. The first stage is the crawling itself, and this is when it looks at the HTML, and this is the sort of code you see when you view page source. This is really Google's bread and butter. It's really resource light, it's really quick, give Google exactly what it wants to see straight away. The second stage is rendering the JavaScript on the page. And this is the sort of code you see when you uh, use Inspect in Chrome DevTools. The problem with rendering is it's much more resource heavy, and as a result, a lot, lot slower. What's happening on this site is when it crawled the site, it essentially wasn't getting any information about any of the pages. It wasn't seeing any internal links, wasn't seeing any page titles, metadata, on-page content. It was only when it rendered that content that it could see it. Because it was such a massive site and rendering was so resource heavy, Googlebot was never really getting the context behind the site, never really understanding the site, and therefore not ranking it competitively. We uh, worked with the development team to uh, server-side render all these key pages. And again, uh, now Google could see that information when it crawled and when it rendered the page. Much easier on Google, much less resource intense, uh, and Google could figure out the context behind uh, everything that was going on. Again, we saw immediate and sustained results, and this is really what drove 1.5 million pounds of organic revenue, went from strength to strength and kept going. Um, really, really successful, just off the back of server-side rendering these key pages. We were moments away from disaster, however. Now, one evening, I was uh, looking at the site, and normally, 5.30, laptop shut, I'm out. But today, the stars had aligned. It was 6.14 p.m., 45 minutes, pretty much, after I should be down the pub. Uh, but for some reason, I was looking at the site, and I saw that they had a no-index applied across their entire website. Obviously, not a good sign. Google was crawling through these and then taking pages out of the index, left, right, and center. Please don't do that. 
So what can we take away from this? Well, you always want to check the differences uh, between crawling with and without JavaScript. This can reveal some really, really crucial and um, massive opportunities in ways you can optimize your site. Ideally, you want to ensure all key pages, uh, or at least all key information, are server-side rendered. You might get into a bit of a fight with some dev teams about this, but hopefully you've got some case studies like this you can use. It really, really is worth it. It can drive massive, massive results. And finally, I didn't think I had to write this one down, but I am going to. Please don't know index your entire site. <laughs> case study four, the mystery of the unfindable global navigation. Now, at first look, this is just like any other global navigation. You know, looks great. Got all our key categories in there. You know, what's wrong with this? But what we found when we crawled the site with JavaScript rendering this time, we've learned from our mistakes, uh, the most linked to pages were all product pages, but these weren't included in the main navigation. So what was happening? And I'm ashamed to say I thought it was Screaming Frog. I thought they'd got something wrong. I was about to email them saying, you've got this wrong. You know, where's the global navigation? But we checked in Google Search Console as well, and this was seeing exactly the same thing. The most linked to pages were all product pages, even though the global navigation was full of category pages. So why was this happening? Why does it matter? Well, Google clearly couldn't see the global navigation either in the HTML or in the domain object model. We went on the site, did some tinkering, did some playing around, and what transpired is that when a user went on the site and clicked on the global navigation button, it was only at that stage that links were loaded into the domain object model. The problem is, Googlebot doesn't interact with a page in the same way. So Googlebot was never clicking on the global navigation button, therefore never seeing the links in the first place. And these are the key pages we really wanted all our internal link value to go to. Again, we fixed using server-side rendering. So when Google crawled the site, it could then see the links in the HTML, see the links when it rendered the page, perfect. And again, immediate sustained impact. So what can we take away? Well, again, we always want to check the differences between crawling with and without JavaScript. In this case, it wouldn't really have helped us, but we should always investigate manually as well. Tools give us some great information, but we can't rely on them entirely. It's always great to get on a site, click around, and see what the issue is. We also want to use dynamic JavaScript or JavaScript that can't be crawled cleverly. I think it has its use, for example, in uh, filter pages that you don't want to be crawled, for example, but please don't use it for key areas of the site, like your global navigation, homepage, any important links on the site. My final case study today is the world's most unindexable website. We knew there was issues early on when we looked at the Systrix graph, and it completely flatlined for about a year before we started working with this client. In my analysis, I'm going to use uh, an extended and quite convoluted metaphor of, uh, of a dinner. Uh, so let's crack right on. For first course, uh, we're going to take a, a global robots.txt disallow. Now, for ages, I thought these were a thing of myth. You know, you hear about them at conferences. Don't do this, they say. But I'd never actually seen one in the world until today. This, what this was basically saying is, if you're Googlebot or any other user agent, don't crawl any URL on the site at all. Obviously, this is not good for SEO purposes when you want Google seeing your key pages and crawling your site as frequently as possible. For main, let's have an X robots no index across every single page. Now, you may be more familiar with a meta no index, which is included uh, in the HTML. An X robots no index is essentially the same thing, but it's applied via the header response. So what this meant is even if Googlebot could crawl the site, which it couldn't, it would then hit the no index, and the pages would be removed from the index entirely. We're going to put a side of mixed canonicals in there. This top URL uh, was what was being internally linked to on the site, but it canonicalized this second URL, which wasn't internally linked to on the site. Again, sending mixed signals when really we want to be aligning everything, consolidating everything, so it's really easy for Google to understand. I'm going to throw in a bottle of the third-party blocking software. So even though it had blocked every user agent, it also had stack path on, which if too many requests were being sent by a crawler, it would block them completely. The problem is, it was also blocking Googlebot. So in the search results, this is what you were seeing. This is essentially all Google could see for a lot of their key pages, protected by stack path. None of the important information, content, context that we want Google to see. For dessert, let's add it. For dessert, let's add in HTML and domain object model differences. 
When it crawled the site, it could see uh, welcome to the online store, sort of generic page title. It was only when it rendered the page, uh, it could see the optimized page title, things like cabinets, furniture, for example. Again, relying on that very resource heavy rendering stage and really making it hard for Google to figure out um, what the context of the site is without rendering. At this stage, I've actually just run out of uh, dinner metaphors, so I'm just gonna run through the last point. Um, single URLs targeting multiple languages. So there's a few different issues associated with this, but um, essentially all these languages existed on one URL. If you clicked a flag, it would uh, translate the content, again using JavaScript, which wasn't crawlable, so Google couldn't see that really valuable translated content. But even if it could see that content, it wouldn't really know which market to rank it in because there'd be several different languages all trying to exist on a single URL. So loads and loads of issues on the site, which is why I think it is the world's most unindexable website. And I challenge you, if you're sitting there thinking, no, 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 I've seen way worse than this, please let me know, I'm intrigued. Um, yeah, loads of issues here, loads of things to fix. You may be asking, why, why? And we asked exactly the same question. As it turned out, they had uh, been under DDoS attacks. Uh, and this is essentially when people trying to scam you, hit your server so many times that it crashes. They then demand money from you in order to stop sending so many requests and get your site back up. Now, I like to think that anyone running DDoS attacks is wearing a, a dark hoodie and running it off an iPad, which I think is actually quite impressive if they can do that off an iPad. But obviously, not good news for our client. Our job was to untangle this whole mess. So what do we do? Well, first I want to talk about what we didn't do. And we didn't do what I think would have been um, probably the obvious thing or the easy thing, and that's to remove the blocks straight away. The reason we didn't do this is because we wanted to approach things in a really systematic way. So when we did open the site back up, it was really clear to Google what the important pages were. It could crawl the site, understand the context, and ultimately rank really well for the terms that we wanted it to. First of all, we created crawlable country subfolders to allow ranking, and we cleaned up the, the subfolder path as well. So now, instead of this one URL, there were five different URLs for all of the different languages, so they could rank in each individual market, expanding their reach infinitely. We then aligned all the signals. We created self-referencing canonicals. We made sure the HTML and the domain object model were showing the exact same targeting, again, making it really easy for Google to understand the site when it crawled the site and when it rendered the site. And we then, only at this stage, did we remove the blocks. So we removed the, the extra robots no index. We tweaked the third party software so it didn't block Googlebot, but if other, other uh, user agents were trying to crawl it, it may still uh, stop them from doing it. And we updated the robots disallow. Uh, we didn't um, remove it entirely because we still wanted to con control some areas of, of the site that were and were, weren't crawled, but we massively uh, opened the site up from what it was before. The results, again, visibility immediately starting to return. I think the spike on the left kind of skews the data, but this was an absolutely huge increase compared to what they were before, which is about a year, a year and a half of absolutely no visibility at all. What this equated to was about 90,000 keywords um, ranking, which is an absolutely huge number. At the moment of this screenshot, there weren't a huge number on the first page, you know, about, about 3,000, 4,000. But I think the reason for this is because there'd been so many issues for so long, Google was just taking its time to figure out the site, what was going on. It's not always an easy fix. So what can we take away? Well, firstly, I think it was really important that we understood the context behind why the site was set up in this way in the first place. This allowed us to talk to the client, talk them through their, their concerns, which were you know, very valid concerns, and ultimately convince them to make these changes and open up the site. We also need to be really careful when we are recommending these changes because they can have a massive impact on ultimately revenue. This site will have lost thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds as a result of all these blocks that were in place. So we really need to be careful when we are recommending these changes. We also want to be careful how different signals interact. So what we didn't want to do is, for example, remove the robots.txt uh, disallow allow Google to crawl the site, it would then hit the no index, and actually all pages would be removed entirely. That could have actually made the situation worse. So we really need to be careful about how different signals interact when we are recommending changes to crawling and indexing. And finally, here's a picture of my dog Jasper, just because he's a bit of a legend. Um, thank you very much for your time. Um, any questions, have a chat with me afterwards. Thank you.
Monthly reporting making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics, the all-in-one SEO software with mind-blowing reporting tools. 